Let's move on to another panellist instead. Rochelle Kahui McConnell is um, from Ngati Whatua Oraki, uh, and she is an environmental and social capital broker. She's passionate about empowering the community to fulfil <coughs> their ambitions and create palpable connections to our land, to Papatuanuku. She's dedicated her work to fulfilling iwi and community environmental outcomes. And as the manager of the Okahu Catchment Ecological Restoration Plan, she is fighting back against many of the man-made impacts Okahu Bay has endured from the development of Tamaki Makaurau for over 100 years. Developed on behalf of Ngāti Whātua Oraiki, the Okahu Catchment Ecological Restoration Plan is a hapu to find Māori, that's as in life force, Māori restoration plan which takes into account the ecological health indicators of the hapu and the wider community. Some of the techniques being used to lessen the impacts include the reinstatement of historical catchment filtration systems through daylighting and riparian planting, a mussel reef restoration program and a citizen science program. Rochelle believes the key issue facing the Gulf is that the value of Matauranga uh, sorry, the value of Matauranga Māori and citizen science is underdeveloped and misunderstood in the rest of restoration of the spirit of the Hauraki Gulf. Would you please give a warm welcome to Rochelle. I'm going to stand up because Mel can't see me. Tēnā koutou kato ko Rochelle Kahui McConnell taku ingoa, ko Ngāti Mania Poto taku iwi, ko Ngāti Huio taku hapu no mai haramai. Um, I am actually Ngāti Mania Poto, but I have the privilege and the, and the honour of working with for Ngāti Whātua Rāke. Um, so I don't stand here with my view, I stand here with the view of the tūpuna of Ngāti Mania Poto and also those of the, the special whānau that I have met through Ngāti Whātua Rāke. Um, which informs my intention, as you can see. Um, I made up the environmental and social capital broker because without empowering community, then we are nowhere. We can't, I, I gave up standing with my finger out saying, we need to do this. Without me giving you the empowerment to be there yourself, then I'm just going to keep talking to you and nobody's going to make any difference. Um, in terms of Mātauranga Māori, there's always this question, what is it? Uh, it's time. It's time connected to a land. It's the time that it took for the kuya to, to figure out if I boil that karaka berry for this amount of time at this time of the year, I can eat it. If I don't, I die. That's Mātauranga Māori. Mātauranga Māori back in, in 1912 from the immigrants and Ngāti Whātua that said your English-based sewage system, which drops cholera, typhoid, fetuses and amputations into Okahu Bay, does not work. It is killing us. Mā Tauranga is where I sat over lots of cups of tea with the kuya saying the beach in Okahu Bay used to be sand. It took us half an hour to fill the nets and then combine and bring it, the, you know, that kaimoana to our whānau. Citizen science is the same thing. It's empowering citizens to believe that their knowledge that they hold for a long time there are people who have swum in Okahu Bay that aren't Ngāti Whātua. They swum there for, the 60, for 60 years every single day. They can tell the same story. The thing for us is that we need to believe that if we empower the community to be citizen scientists, then let them be citizen scientists. Agencies need to allow themselves to think, to believe, and actually understand it's not all in their boat. It's in our boat. Um, uh, interestingly, a shift in cultural thinking. The shift in cultural thinking that I believe is happening in Aotearoa right now is that Mātauranga Māori is being spoken about in public events like this. Years ago, we struggled to even believe that we could have co-governance structures and that we could talk about Modi, and I wouldn't have to explain what that is to you. So we are shifting, but we need to allow for that space where we can interpret what we're saying in our intrinsic kind of fluffy stuff, like that bay doesn't sound right. We can interpret that with empirical science. We can throw in you know, saturated oxygen and, and turbidity. We can do all of that sort of stuff. But what we need to do is hold the intention of what our knowledge is, marry it to empirical science, science and then keep fighting and find those infiltrators in agencies that will give us the chance to listen. And we're at that point now. 
every single one of us, you know, we can have our, our stalwarts. For us, we always have those aunties that stand there with their kitty and they will say, this is not full anymore. Why isn't it full? Those are our specific heroes in each of the communities that we need to hold on to. It's not one white person. It's not one brown woman. It's not one yellow person. Every single community, we have to find those individuals that has the power to stand up. And they're absolutely there. There's nothing, you know, I, I, in fact, we're, we're just over, overgrown and overblown with community members. Um, it's three. Cool, good. I'm finished. Then I'll go to a I'm going to sit down. Fantastic, that's lovely. So, um, questions or uh, additional comments from members of the panel to that wonderful, colourful and impassioned presentation? Not that you weren't, Steve. You were also awesome. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have favourites, I'm just... <laughs> oh, look, I, uh, Sam. This is working. Hello, everyone, I'm Sam. Um, I think that was really, really wonderful to hear, Rochelle. Kia ora to you for that. Uh, you know, one of the things that strikes me is this idea of shifting baselines you know when we think that it's okay because we can go out and see or catch a kahawai one day whereas this the stories of what it used to be like that was the baseline you know the way that i'm growing up i've seen it change and i'm you know 31 years old What's the baseline going to be for my two and a half year old daughter when she's big enough to get in the water like Riley does with Steve? What's the reality going to be for her? You know, that's why I care so much about it. And I think, you know, we've got to look back to the past and look back to some of these things that used to be considered normal to set a goal for where we want to actually get to on some of these issues. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I don't know why this is a debate. No. Nobody here is going to say, you know, no. I, I think you, we are. I, um, baselines for mana whenua and tangata whenua are different again from baselines from the last 50 years. Mm. Uh, and I, and I, I think of the time, like I said before, 20 years ago where we weren't even speaking about baselines. Mm. So there's such a consciousness shift in our society. Good point, and it's not a debate, is it? I mean, I, th I was kind of thinking that there might be an evil person on the panel, but yeah. <laughs> there isn't. Can't find them yet, this time. Um, so, then, so then it's about throwing ideas in the basket, and not everybody is going to agree with everybody's idea. So it's more of a, I think we've all, we're all going to acknowledge what the problems are, and we may or may not agree with the the solutions that are suggested, but we should chuck them all in the basket. Waste not, want not. The respect, we call it the trifecta of respect, this business of utilisation, respecting the animal, uh, respecting our community, that we share the, the head with, and self-respect, knowing that we're doing the right thing. It's a real uh, manaki tanga trifecta. Mm. Uh, free fish heads dot co dot nz is a contemporary mm -hmm. matauranga it's where we are mm -hmm. enabled with the internet to hook up make connections meet people on the basis of a fish head mm -hmm. there are five and a half thousand people who have registered they've clicked on the pot i want and there's a rapidly growing number of people who are clicking on the the bucket i have and they get three phone numbers and next thing you know you've got these beautiful meetings of people and an exchange a handover and a mm. gift mm. and uh, that is a contemporary mm. mā tauranga mm. Māori. Mm. I've got a, an example of another contemporary uh, mā tauranga Māori thing that I saw the other week it's <laughs> called River Talks it was out um, by Glenn Innes and there was a crew of young people who were educating a whole bunch of school students and local people from the community. And there was a really emotional talk about how they used to harvest eels out of that river. And it's, it's real nasty now. Like, you, would, you can't swim in it. It's, it's very much urban waterway. And they were educating these kids uh, using storytelling 
and using basically a, th a production. It was a theatre production <coughs> with mainly in Te Reo, and to me it was the, actually the best urban freshwater quality thing I've ever seen. And I was pretty humbled to be a small, very small part of that. But they, what they did was they got art and they got culture and they harnessed the power of those things that people really like and used it to educate them about something that's impacting the Hauraki Gulf. And I think that there are ways that we can look at examples like that. I'll, you know, I'll talk a little bit more about some of that stuff in my, in my talk, but it's examples of the people who organised that. They stood up and said, I'm going to do this, and they combined a bunch, of, a bunch of things that people really enjoy with stories from what it used to be like. Oh. Sorry. Nice. Great. No, thank you, Sam. Can we have a round of applause for Rochelle? Thank you.